right, so the last video we talked about the Sky Active transmission in general. This one, um, I had an extra converter out back, so I sent it in, got it cut open. We're going to walk through it, um, some of the things that make it special. This one is out of the smaller one, so the non-turbo factory cars, um, they'll say Z21 on them. That means they're for the smaller transmission. If they say Z31, that's for the bigger one. Um, there's your Mazda part number. All the covers have that uh, five digit right there. If you look down at the hub, you can kind of see in there you've got two splines. Uh, the bigger one out there is what hooks into the transmission oil pump. The smaller one down in the bottom uh, does the input shaft. This is the back side of it. Um, the smaller version has the four bolts. The bigger one has six. Just done for strength. So if we lift it off, it's been cut, you can see, right there, just cut the welds. So this is the inside of the cover, um, called the impeller, goes by a couple different names. Interesting things you can see on all of these. Um, they're laser welded from the factory. These converters are actually provided by Exidy for Mazda. Um, Really, really solid units, but let's see if we can get a good shot down there at the fins. Um, a lot of the lesser quality converters from some other manufacturers, they're just laid in there. Um, it'll be folded over on this spot versus welded in like this one is. The next piece, this is the stator. This is where the torque multiplication, um, this is actually a big component of it. It forces fluid through, changes the angle of it um, from here to here to here. That's what generates a torque multiplication in a converter. Um, what that basically means, um, I know on the turbo cars, I can't remember what it is offhand on the non-turbos, but on the turbo cars it's a 1.88 ratio. So what that means is up until the speed is reached, that this no longer multiplies the torque for every 100 pound-feet of torque the engine makes, it multiplies it to 188. This is a thrust washer that sits in there. Uh, another high quality piece. You can see the machine work. A lot of actual finished machine work goes into this. Um, a lot of other manufacturers just cast it and send it in. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but uh, nice finished work there. Has a one way clutch. Um, you can see you try to turn it only turns it only turns the whole unit that way so it only drives the pump um, when it's engaged but it can also free will that way this is to keep that motion is to keep the fluid from being able to turn the converter backwards this next piece is called the damper um, it's where a lot of the actual magic happens besides that so this functions a lot like a dual mass flywheel. Um, you've got different springs inside there. It takes up the vibration. Let's see if we can kind of catch those moving around in there. Um, that is splined to the input shaft and it can freewheel from the cover um, because of those clutches in there. We'll go over those in a second. Um, back of the clutches spline in to those there. When it locks up, it allows the input shaft to turn as one unit with the cover. And this cover, this cover are welded together. They will always turn the same. This is where the variance happens. And then the input shaft here into the transmission. Um, again, you can see really high quality. Um, the entire piece on the back has been heat treated. Um, I didn't pull all this part down in there, but there's a ceiling ring right there. You can see the back of the cover again, where those are brazed. I can't tell if they're brazed, they're likely brazed, or they're laser welded, but I believe they're brazed. Um, really cool stuff right here. This is what allows um, lockup to happen as early as five miles an hour without the car shaking like crazy. A lot of the older cars that tried to do early lockup didn't have a damper of this size. Um, the big difference on this piece between this and the bigger cars 
the damper itself is actually a little bit bigger, springs are bigger, the runners of the uh, converter itself are go out to about here. So it's a bigger piece altogether here. Again, that's done for strength. Um, better torque multiplication there. This is where lockup happens. Um, since I'm doing this one-handed, uh, I cheated. It's a big snap ring that goes here that holds it down. I've already pried this up a bit. So this is a pressure plate. This converter had came out of a core, had about 120,000 miles on it. So the wear you see on here is pretty good for only 120,000, or for 120,000 miles. Not a ton of wear. So here are the clutches. Um, so they are single-sided. You've got an externally splined one, an internally splined one. And you've got two more, one more of each. So a total of two external. Let's see if I can get that out. And this is a thrust washer. Um, so single-sided frictions, they are steel on the back. So that applies against here. This is where your surface, uh, lock-up surface is. Here are some people, especially with big diesel converters or race converters, they talk about triple lock converters. Um, what that means is there are three friction material surfaces that touch each other, we have four. Um, really good wear on these clutches also for that amount of miles really in good shape not not a lot of damage i nicked that one earlier um where we will see some a little bit of wear so this here goes in there it's got a nice tons of contact points looks great where we will see somewhere and you can see it on here are these surfaces where it splines so you can see on all of those it's been digging in these are what spline onto here. So when it's going into lockup, you've got a fair amount, like you've got a lot of weight going against them, you got a lot of pressure, a lot of force. So eventually they kind of hammer in a little bit there. But again, with the mileage, that's really good wear. We'll pull some of these apart and they're just destroyed. Not on the Mazdas, but other, uh, other manufacturers that you do a similar system. Um, so you've got two opposing they're splined to the cover the other two are there and here is the ply piston so again i've cheated there's no ring on the outside and the inside that makes it way easier to pull it apart one-handed so what it does fluid enters here from the input shaft we won't be able to see in here but it goes into a channel here this is one of the o-ring grooves underneath here fluid comes out this piston moves up and down with the fluid it pushes up against your pressure plate here snap ring so there's only so much pressure you'll be able to run up against this um, before you'll do damage but i don't think we will ever really run into an issue with that and uh, the piston itself is another really high quality machining lots of it's really hard to capture on the video but Really nice finish work on that. Um, yeah, again, so this is just a quick tear down, go through. Um, part of the reason I wanted to cover on this on the clutches, so when everybody talks about, especially on the non-turbo cars, um, the lockup clutches on the turbo cars are substantially wider. They're closer to this. Um, and then again with the dampener, the turbo factory cars don't necessarily experience a lot of the same uh, low speed shutter that the other ones that these do so what you're feeling when you're coming to a stop and a lot of people will talk about how you get a jerk you get something mazda tries to keep these clutches locked as hard as they can for as long as they can and so what you're doing is it's really like if you're in a manual transmission and you're lugging the engine down and then you get going again, you're gonna have some vibration. The damper takes up some of that, it can only do so much. Um, but when you're feeling that lugging, the jerking sensation that some people talk about that they get in these cars, especially at low speed, comes from this stain locked up. You're keeping a solid connection, whereas 
and a converter when it's normally unlocked, all of that force is taken up in the hydraulic portion of the unit.